By the end of this video, you're gonna know everything you need to know to purchase a music production laptop. So definitely hang on, don't click away. This is gonna have information about the specs, your specific workflow, whether you're using one instrument or multiple instruments or multiple microphones, price points, we're gonna look at budget-friendly laptops all the way up to high-end, more expensive premium laptops. We're gonna even discuss how you record. Do you record in a soundproof studio? Do you record maybe in your room? So you need a more quiet laptop. We're gonna cover all of this as we work through the video so you'll understand what laptop you need to buy. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the specs. Which CPU, GPU, how much RAM, and how much storage do you need? Let's first cover the CPU. You want high single core performance. It is going to be a top priority. Now, the reason being is sequential or serial processing. So that means that no matter how many cores you have in your system, you are running on sequential processing for most processes in a music production software, like a DAW. It's not possible to parallel process instruments and effects that are on the same channel. So if you have instruments and effects on the same channel, you cannot process those all at the same time. They have to be sequentially processed. And so what happens is you're relying on how fast a single core is, which is why H series processors are gonna be the most popular processors for music production laptops. You want high frequency, on your single core performance. It doesn't matter if you have eight, 16, 24 cores all running at 2.5 gigahertz, you're gonna wanna have a single core running at 5.4. That would be a much better performing laptop. Now next, let's talk about multi-core performance. Can it help? Multi-core performance can help, but if one worker, one core gets backed up, it will slow down the entire system. So let's say you do have multiple channels set up, right? But if one channel backs up because it's a more robust process, let's say you have multiple effects on the voice or on the guitar, or it's coming in through a certain old analog channel that has to be converted and it takes more performance, then it's gonna slow down the whole process. So that's why you wanna have high single core performance for each of the cores in your system. So if the program you're using does utilize multi-core performance, your system still could bottleneck, which is why it's important to consider a processor with high single core performance. At a bare minimum, I would definitely recommend the i5-1335U from Intel or the Ryzen 5 6600U from Ryzen. Or if you're an Apple fanboy or fangirl, you're gonna wanna check out the Apple M1 chip. I wouldn't go anything earlier than the M1. I wouldn't try and get into you know the Intel chip-based Apple computers. I would go ahead and get the new M1 systems. Now, moving on to checking out the CPUs with the highest single core performance. I have them ranked here from highest to lowest. As you can see, we start out with the latest i9-14900HX and the i9-13900H from last year, and then we work our way down. So I'm gonna leave this up here on the list for a minute, but the, basically the best way to look at this is gonna be the HX processors, whether you're looking at Ryzen or Intel are gonna have the highest single core performance, followed up by their nine series, so be the i9 from Intel or the Ryzen 9 from Ryzen. Their i9 series, so be the i9-13900H, and then followed by the i7, 13700H. But those HX are gonna have the highest single core performance. Those are the processors that have been tweaked the most to give you the most performance. Now you wanna look at the M3 Pro and M3 Max from Apple if you wanna get the best performance out of Apple products. But then from there, I wouldn't really dabble too much in the M2 if you're like, well, if I get the M2, is it still close to as much performance? Not really, going from M1 to M2 was not a huge performance jump. It was actually only about a 15 to 25% jump in performance. So if it were me and you have an M1 laptop, I wouldn't upgrade to M2 just because they're on sale this year. And that's one great reason you're considering buying right now at the release of this video is because it's heading into 2024. And as the 2024 laptops release, the 2023 ones go on sale. So if you're watching this video right around the time I post it, you're picking a great time to buy. Anyway, as you see the M2s go on sale, I wouldn't jump all over it and upgrade from M1 to M2. If I were making an upgrade and I already had an Apple M1 laptop, I would go for M3. Uh, so I would either wait for that performance price or I would just stick with M1 because it's gonna be great performance for you. Now from there, we work down to you know the H-series processors, 
from 2022, the 6000 series, and then we work down to the 5000 series, and then we work down to the U series processors from both Intel and Ryzen. So that's kind of how it tears down in performance. All right, moving forward, let's go ahead and check out random access memory, better known as RAM. So if you're not really familiar with RAM, basically it is the temporary storage of your laptop to run applications. It's a particular part of your system that when you open an application, it utilizes that random access memory in order to run an application smoothly. If you have 16 gigs of RAM, you're going to have that amount, which will be taken up every time you open a program. So let's say you open Google Chrome, you're gonna use anywhere from one to two gigs of RAM. Now keep in mind your system itself can use up to a gig of RAM. Now from there you open Spotify, or if you're on a Mac, you open Apple Music, and now you use anywhere from two to three gigs of RAM for that program. Now you open a music production software, that could be anywhere from six to 10 gigs of RAM. So you can see you can use it up rather quickly, and as you use it up quickly, it starts to bottleneck your system if you max out your RAM, because you can't get any more RAM than the RAM you have. So it conserves the RAM, and delineates it across the programs. And there's actually little settings in your program. Specifically, I'm thinking of Premiere Pro right now off the top of my head. You can actually tell it how much RAM to utilize. So something like Premiere Pro will say only utilize 10 gigs of RAM, but you can actually up that to like 16 or 24, depending on how much you have in your system. So there's ways to tweak the settings in order to get the most out of a program. So you can say like use 80% of the RAM and then it, it pushes 80% and then 20% for the rest of the thing. So it bottlenecks less the program you want. However, the best solution is to have as much RAM as you need. So if you're gonna have three applications or four applications open along with your music production software, I recommend at least 16 gigs of RAM. If you have the budget, go to 32, because that'll give you much more ceiling. You'll keep as many components in your system from bottlenecking as possible. Without sufficient RAM, your apps may freeze or just flat out crash on you. Okay, next let's talk about a graphics processing unit, GPU. Do we need a GPU? for music production. Well, actually, surprisingly, sometimes, some of the programs actually utilize GPU functionality in it to generate some of the functions. So some plugins do require GPU support. Now these could be run on the CPU onboard graphics, but it would run smoother with a dedicated GPU. Now, every CPU these days comes with integrated graphics. So it's not that the program won't run with integrated graphics, it won't run, without a dedicated GPU, it will run, but it will run smoother with a dedicated GPU. So I would do some research, check into the system requirements of the software that you plan on using, and somewhere in the software list, it will tell you if it requires GPU support. If it says does require GPU support, don't be afraid that you have to have a laptop with a dedicated GPU because there are integrated graphics in CPUs. However, that would be a reason to keep your eye out for a laptop that has a dedicated GPU. Now, a lot of the laptops on my recommendations are going to have dedicated GPUs. Why, you might ask? Because most high-performing processors, most high TDP processors that you need for high single-core performance usually come with a dedicated GPU because these are gaming laptops. So keep that in mind. Now, if you want to run multiple external monitors, then a GPU will make sure that you have all the performance that you need to run those multiple monitors without wasting CPU performance. So the GPU, one of its extra tasks is to go ahead and output graphics to say an external monitor. By having a dedicated GPU, you're not stealing the performance from the CPU to run that external monitor. So if you're somebody with a really large setup for music production, you have maybe two or three extra monitors, then you definitely wanna have a dedicated GPU. So you allow the GPU to do all that work and they can get the CPU free to process your music production. Next would be storage. So an SSD is basically like a big thumb drive. So here I have an SSD external storage drive. It's very small. It doesn't have an internal disk that's spinning. And so the difference between this is just like a solid piece of SD card, right? It's just reads to it, unreads from it. It doesn't spin, the eye doesn't have to find it. Where you see the picture I have here on the screen, a old school hard drive has a spinning disk and an eye that reads the disk for the information that you stored on it. So no longer do SSDs have that. Um, basically most computers you're gonna buy today are gonna come with SSDs, but I like to do the little explanation just so you understand and maybe you can tell your friends how they work. So the way I explain this to simplify it is manual lookup versus automated lookup. So let's say I want to understand what the word obligation means. I will go up to the shelf, I'll grab a dictionary off the shelf, I'll open it up, I'll scroll through, I'll find the word obligation and I'll read its definition and maybe some synonyms to go along with it. 
versus me pulling out my iPhone or Android, if you're that kind of person. That wasn't a dig, I was just saying the difference. Anyway, and I search obligation definition. And then immediately it pops it up and shows me the definition as well as some synonyms. So it's just that more direct to the information rather than the scrolling disk. So that's what makes them faster, okay? So manual search versus instant search. SSDs are gonna be faster than hard disk drives. If you want a little bit of extra storage, I highly recommend these Kingston XS drives. They're super fast, very reliable, and I have tons of storage. You can get them in two terabytes or four terabytes. I'll link it in the description below. Highly recommend these. I used Samsung T drives for a long time, but these are my new go-to. <clears throat> Also, all the computers that we discussed in this video will be linked in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So I'm so grateful when you guys purchase through those links. All right, now let's discuss your workflow. What is your workflow? What are you doing? Do you have one to two mics, some reverb, maybe a virtual instrument, or do you have a massive production? five plus mics, tons of reverb, synth effects, and five virtual instruments, right? These are like massively different workflows. So for the first one, if you're somebody who's using one to two mics, a little bit of reverb, maybe a virtual instrument, I recommend a thin and light ultrabook. Maybe even something like the MacBook Air M2, like I have here with an M2 processor. So this could be something with an i5 1340p or an i7 1360p, maybe a Ryzen 5 7530U, processor from Ryzen, uh, or maybe an Apple MacBook Air M2 or an Apple MacBook Pro 13 with an M2. This would be plenty of performance for a simple workflow. Now let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's have two to four mics, let's reverb, synth, effects, and maybe three to five virtual instruments. Well, this is where I would really start to kick things into like a gaming laptop, maybe something like a Lenovo Lock, you know, budget-friendly $800 laptop, has a dedicated GPU and a pretty high TDP processor. Maybe even something like the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14. Um, something like the MacBook Pro M1 Pro or M1 Max, right? You could go up to the M3 Pro um, if you're interested. That would be a lot, a, a, quite a bit more money because you can probably find a refurbished M1 Pro and that would be great performance. But if you want to make sure you have no ceiling, no bottlenecks, um, I would definitely go for an M3 Pro because that would just guarantee that you have the performance you need. Now, one of the biggest differences between Windows laptops and Apple laptops is going to be how you work. So are you going to keep your computer right next to you while you're you know, playing, singing, however you're producing your workflow? If that's the case, I would definitely recommend the Apple products because they're going to be silent. They're not going to have a lot of large fans kick on. It's not going to be very noisy. Whereas if you get a gaming laptop, let's say something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, it's going to have incredible performance. However, you're gonna to wanna to stick that laptop out of the room, especially if you don't have like a little soundproof box, like, you know, you jump into and that's it. You're gonna to to put that laptop out of the room to have the room as quiet as possible to get the best production possible. So that's where you really have to make the decision of, you know, uh, you know, a good, well-priced, kind of more affordable laptop, like a, a good gaming laptop versus something like if you are really wanting to get a very silent laptop, getting a MacBook Pro because of the way you produce your music. All right, next is gonna be complex five mics, reverb, synth, effects, and five plus virtual microphones. And this is gonna be where you're definitely gonna to wanna to get into something <clears throat> like an Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Scar. This has a Ryzen 9 7940HX and RTX 4090. You're gonna have all the performance you need to make sure that you have tons of ceiling. You can even get into something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i with the latest i9-14900HX processor and an RTX 4070 or 4080. Tons of ceiling gonna be a little bit more expensive of a laptop, but you're gonna make sure you have what you need for music production. And this is something where you're definitely gonna want an M3 Pro uh, or an M3 Max. I mean, for me, if you have tons of instruments and you're really pushing your production to the next level, I would go for the M3 Max just to make sure you have no bottlenecks. I'd get 32 gigs of RAM uh, or even up to 64 gigs of RAM, but you're gonna be talking about a five to $7,000 computer um, versus this here, which has 64 gigs of RAM, has a powerful processor, has a GPU, about $3,500. So that's where Apple versus you know a Windows gaming laptop is gonna make a big difference in the cost it takes to operate your system. Okay, if you have questions at this point, please comment below. 
Let me know if I missed anything and I'd be happy to address those in the comments as this is something that I really want to be a really robust guide for you. And you have questions, either people in the community or myself can answer them. Okay, and as we move into the next step of the process, helping you find the laptop you need, all the laptops will be linked up in the description below to help you with your purchasing decision. Okay, so these will be the simple production laptops, right? These are the one to two mics. These gonna be some of the Windows laptops that are gonna be lower TDP. You're not gonna see a lot of H series processors. You'll see some, but these are gonna be more of those entry level laptops, simple music production setups. So anything from the HP Pavilion at the most budget friendly to the Lenovo Yoga 7i, which has the most premium build quality and the most RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. So you have to keep an eye out for the specs as you're selecting your music production laptop. Honestly, my top pick on this lineup would be the Yoga 7i because you have that RAM to keep from bottlenecking that part of your system. That's really important. Okay, next we're gonna look at the mid-range music production laptops. These are gonna be some H-series processors. Occasionally we're gonna see a P-series, which will be more of a low power processor, as you can see in the Lenovo Yoga 9i. But again, all these laptops we're gonna see with 16 gigs of RAM outside of the Apple laptop. The reason we don't see 16 gigs on the Apple laptop, and I'm okay with that, is because the RAM is interconnected with the chipset. So the reason it is okay for eight is because it's closer to the CPU. It doesn't have to make as long distance of a travel to get that RAM and access it. Therefore, it acts as if it's 16 gigs of RAM. I was recently on a trip at CES 2024 and I was editing 6K footage on this laptop, which would be unprecedented on a MacBook Air from five or 10 years ago. Um, it just would not have had the performance to do such a thing. Part of that is actually going to be the RAM because RAM helps a lot with playback in video editing software, much like RAM will help with playback and recording inside of a music production software. So keep that in mind. So really one or two instruments is gonna be great, especially for that MacBook Air, it can be very quiet. Um, if you're gonna get into something more budget friendly but have more performance, definitely check out the HP Victus and the MSI Stealth. You're gonna have H series processors with dedicated GPUs. They're gonna have plenty of performance. However, they're gonna be a little bit more noisy. Now, what I love about the Victus and the HP Omen this year is they've both had slight redesigns. Well, the Omen had a full redesign. You can see it now it has a ledge, a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, tons of ports and connectivity, great laptop. The HP Victus, had a very discreet upgrade this year. They rounded off the edges on the top cover and bottom cover to make the laptop far more premium, in my opinion. Now they didn't improve the build materials, but they just refined the assembly as well as how the materials are produced. So this laptop's so much more comfortable to hold in your hand. It just feels a lot nicer. Compared to something like the Lenovo Lock, which I will show later in the video, this would be my top pick comparatively. Lenovo Lock is a great price. It's around $800. So it's gonna be a bit more affordable than the HP Victus, but the HP Victus feels much more premium comparatively. So keep that in mind. Now the next would be the MSI Stealth 14. It's gonna be a nice compact 14 inch laptop. A little on the expensive side for an RTX 4050, but the fact that it's compact on the go friendly is a really nice feature. Now next we're gonna look at the HP Spectre 2 in 1 16 inch. Now this is going to be the latest Intel Core Ultra. I have yet to test Intel Core Ultra, for music production. So this is one that I am saying, it has an RTX 4050, it has a high TDP processor, but also very efficient. And so I am assuming, and I'm making an assumption, so I admit that, I'm assuming this would be a good laptop for music production. Comes with 32 gigs of RAM, so seemingly has what you need for music production. Next, we're looking at the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. This is like the Swiss Army knife, the compact Swiss Army knife, of music production laptops. It's thin, it's light, it has incredible build quality, it has a powerful GPU, a powerful CPU, and it's also a two-in-one laptop. So it's so functional and uh, the form factor is amazing. Just look how thin that is. And it's very professional looking. That's one thing I really like about it as well. It's a very professional laptop, large trackpad. It's uh, one of my favorite laptops over the past couple of years, especially in 2023 when they upgraded the trackpad. Now to keep in mind, there's two options here. The $1,249 version does not come with a dedicated GPU, which would be great for simple workflows. However, if you're getting into more complicated workflows, I'd recommend the one with the dedicated GPU, which would almost double the price of the laptop. To me, it's a little ostentatious to double the price for adding a dedicated GPU, but they're the company. Clearly they get to do what they want. However, I disagree. I feel like it should be like maybe $1,800 to $2,100, but $2,500, really? It's a bit crazy if you ask me. 
Anyway, that's the price. The Asus Republic of Gamers Strix Scar 16. Talked about the 17 earlier. It's gonna be very, very similar in the form factor. However, uh, we're gonna have a taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen rather than this 17 inch screen. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit less performance. This one's gonna have the Intel i9 14900HX. And we're gonna have a 4060 up to a 4070 plus 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. So this one will definitely be suitable for complicated to complex workflows for music production. The HP Omen Transcend 14. This is another laptop with the Intel Core Ultra 185H. So again, assuming this is gonna have the performance we need from a CPU standpoint, we do have the RTX 4060 and 4070 with 32 gigs of RAM, which is why I am confident this will be the performance you need. However, like I said, I've yet to test it. So I cannot give my full endorsement. However, it does look like the kind of laptop that will work really well for music production. Next, looking at the MSI Prestige 16 AI. This one again, Intel Core Ultra 9, 185H, got 32 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4060 to a 4070. So looks as if it would make a great laptop for music production. All right, next on the lineup, we have, like I mentioned, the Lenovo Lock which is a great budget-friendly option, around $809, starting at, and I've even seen them on sale for the $700 price point. So that's a really great budget-friendly option, RTX 4050, and a budget-friendly, though high TDP, i5 13420H processor or a Ryzen 7 7840HS. Great option. Next, we're looking at my favorite compact 14-inch gaming laptop from 2023. This will be the Lenovo Legion Slim 5. It has the Ryzen 7 7840HS. I have seen this laptop on sale, the non-OLED version, for around the $1,000 price point. Amazing. It does come in an OLED version. That one's going to be around the $1,500 price point, maybe on sale for twelve dollars to $1,300. Check the links in the description below for the live pricing. But this also has an RTX 4050 or 4060, 16 gigs of RAM, though this is soldered to the motherboard. So if you buy this laptop and you wanna have 32 gigs of RAM, make sure you upgrade it from Lenovo. You can't upgrade it post-purchase, so you go on Lenovo's website, select 32 gigs of RAM, and then they'll equip it soldered to the motherboard from the factory, right? So if that is an option, honestly, there's so many laptops running through my head on these lineups right now that I think it's an option to upgrade this on Lenovo's website, but you'll have to check and verify for me. And then of course we have one terabyte SSD, my favorite compact 14 inch gaming laptop from 2023. Lenovo Legion Pro 7i, amazing. i9 processor, RTX 4070, 32 gigs of RAM, can't beat it. The Lenovo Slim series, the reason I went through the, you know, Pro 7i so fast is because it's just a great laptop. And that's all there is to it. Nothing fancy to it. This one, however, though, is a little on the fancier side. Aluminum top cover, bottom cover, thin and light, great port connectivity, great build quality. My favorite 16 inch gaming laptop, you know, kind of the classic clamshell gaming laptop from 2023. So I would say if you ask me my two favorite laptops from 2023, it would be these. Now that's probably going to change in 2024. Asus has launched their new 14 inch laptop for 2024. But Lenovo really captured my heart in 2023. I'm not gonna pretend I didn't see a lot of impressive stuff from Lenovo in 2023. And lastly, for the Lenovo lineup, we have the Legion Pro 5i. Again, we are sitting inside the complex video production lineup now. So all the laptops you're seeing now are gonna be for complex music production. They have the horsepower they need from the CPU, GPU, and you have the capability for RAM. So that's what we're looking at. This is the Pro 5i, great upgrade path, great functionality, great screen, durable, long-lasting, well-optimized laptop. I see this laptop outperforming two to $3,000 laptops consistently on my channel with an RTX 4070 or even a 4060 and an i7-13700H. Also, you can get it in a 13700HX. So either way, both are gonna be great. For the MacBook Pros, we're gonna talk through this real quick. If you can find a refurbished MacBook Pro 14 M1 Pro, I was seeing them on bestbuy.com for around $1,299. That is an awesome laptop for complicated music production. Definitely simple, but complicated. Now, if you wanna to get to complex, um, you would go for the M1 Max, in my opinion. If you wanna be safe and you wanna have the latest and greatest, the M3 Pro through the M3 Max, will all be great for complex, okay? That's just making sure you have a good ceiling. Now I will say, 
if you can choose between the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, M3 Pro having 64 gigs of RAM, and the M3 Max having like 32 gigs, it might be advantageous to get the M3 Pro with 64 gigs of RAM because you're creating higher ceiling for your laptop for RAM. So you're kind of creating, instead of having like one performance metric up here, like the CPU, and then the RAM here, you kind of even them out. And so you have really great RAM, really great CPU, and then nothing bottlenecks. You already have really good single core performance out of the M3 Pro. Because as you see here on this chart, when we go from Pro to Max, we increase the cores, right? So it gets more multi-core performance. It's only gonna get so much more single core performance, which is why for me, I would go M3 Pro, 12 core, 18 core GPU with 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. That would be kind of like my perfect complex setup. If I was on a budget, if I wasn't on a budget and I just want to go Mac Daddy, I'd go M M M3 Max with 64 gigs of RAM and spend, you know, $7,000. So that's, that's just how I'm seeing the cookie crumble here with the Max. Now, high-end music production laptops. Again, we're moving up. We're seeing much more powerful laptops and a little bit more premium price points. So all these laptops here are gonna be premium price points. Now, one that I really wanna point out is of course, year over year, the ProArt Studio Book Pro 16 OLED. The reason I wanna point this one out is because it has something that no other laptop has, and that is the dial. Asus has brought up this dial a couple of years ago, and it really does help as far as improving your productivity in your workflow. You can scroll through different tools, you can move down your timeline back and forth. You can customize this and set it up however you want. So that's a really cool thing about this laptop. However, on the 2022 version, I never got the 2023 version. It made me really sad. I don't get all the laptops I want to get. It's opposed to some popular beliefs. Um, this only has click buttons here. The trackpad is not clickable. So that's kind of something to get used to because most trackpads are physically clickable. Now, do you have a tap? So you can tap it and it clicks, the click tap like on Windows laptops. But actually this right, left clicks, center button, those are all mechanical buttons. The dial is fantastic. It is truly a booster of productivity. Thoroughly enjoy it, definitely something to check out. And of course this laptop has great performance, all that you need for complex music production. Next up on the lineup is going to be the laptops coming out in 2024 that I personally would be looking out for. Now I've heard that the ProArt is getting some sort of upgrade, whether a completely new design or revision in the design. I was at the Asus booth and they would not really tell me what was happening, but they did tell me something was going to be happening. So I'm excited about that. But the Lenovo Legion series are gonna be some nice upgrades as far as performance is concerned with the 14th gen Intel processors. And we're going to see on the Lenovo Legion 7i a really nice improved screen for 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy, which is gonna be a first for the Legion series, which I'm very excited about. Lenovo Legion Pro 5i is gonna be one of the best for optimized performance bang for buck. It's going to have great performance at a great price point. One I'm looking forward to for efficiency and performance is going to be the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. A laptop that they've yet to produce before, which has an Intel Core 9, 185H with an RTX 4060 or up to a 4070. And now for the first time, you can get the Yoga series with 64 gigs of RAM. That's a big deal. And that would make a fantastic music production laptop. One terabyte of SSD. And if you need color accuracy for any artwork you're working on, you have a mini LED display at 100% DCI-P3. Looking at the MSI Cyborg 14, this is a great laptop if you're on a budget, but still wanna have great performance. It's gonna have a plastic build quality, built well, nice and thin, RTX 4060, 16 gigs of RAM, but you still get 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy from an IPS display. So if you're working on art, it's gonna be a great laptop. The Mac Daddy of the MSI Creator laptops is going to be the MSI Creator 16 AI. It's gonna have the latest Intel Core Ultra 9, 185H, you can have the NVIDIA RTX 4060 up to a 4090, or if you're somebody who does music, but also does 3D modeling, an interesting combination, but I'm sure somebody does it, you can get an NVIDIA RTX A5000 for that laptop. And you can also get it up to 64 gigs of RAM with 100% sRGB with mini LED display. So it is a great laptop. Now, coming up and also available, we have the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G16, now with OLED display, as well as the G14. We have the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Scar 16, which I have seen available on Best Buy and there might be available on B&H as well. 
Now the HP Omen Transcend 14, one of my most anticipated laptops for this year. I can't wait to review one in my studio. It's looking like a great one and definitely worth the wait. And then lastly, the MSI Prestige 16 AI, which I actually have had my hands on. And I thought it was pretty good. Didn't have performance that blew me out of the water. Just based on Cinebench R23, it was about the same performance as an Intel Core i9 from last year, is now the Intel Core Ultra 9 from this year. But it is promising to see a laptop hopefully become more efficient this year, which means better battery life. So efficiency is the name of the game this year from Intel, not exactly boosting performance just for an honest uh, assessment from what I saw at CES 2024. Now, I'm gonna ask you to do four things. Marketing people say never ask them to do four, ask them to do one, but marketing people think you're dumb and you're not dumb. You're a smart individual and you can do four things. First and foremost, ever so gently massage that like button. Whoever said like buttons like to be smashed, they're morons. Like buttons like to be massaged. Second, <clears throat> definitely subscribe to the channel. Third, if you like any of these laptops and you're ready to make a purchase, links are in the description below. Now, the fourth one is if you're uncertain. If you're still trying to figure it out, still trying to get a closer look at a certain laptop, go over to my channel, check out the full reviews that I've posted of each of these laptops that you've seen here on my desk, and you'll get a full perspective on each of the laptops and help you make a purchasing decision. And then from there, click the links in the description below because that supports the channel, keeps it alive, keeps my editor with food on her table and feeding my four crazy children. And uh, I really appreciate it. All right, enough talking. I'll see you in the next video.